Hello and welcome. I have a haul for y'all. I have been gut thrifting lately and what that means is when my gut tells me to thrift, I go. And it had told me to go to the Goodwill in Williamsburg, which is an amazing high volume thrift. When I say high volume thrift, I mean it's a thrift store that has a lot of high turnover. So it gets a lot of donations and it goes through those donations pretty quickly. And it's an area of affluence in addition to being a college town. So there is quite a variety of stuff you can get here. And oh my goodness, I'm so glad I went. I'm going to show you the hard goods first, starting with this cute little uh, constellation mug. This is Galaxy by Sakura. Sakura is a, a Japanese manufacturer and I, there's actually a little plate that goes with this too. But to be honest, I didn't feel like bothering to dig those out. There are seven of these. Uh, teacups and saucers. They are six ounces. If you did not know, six ounces is the traditional cocktail size in addition to being the traditional teacup size. So do with that information what you will. But I picked up seven of these because I just thought they were super cute and uh, can be not only a lovely addition to your afternoon tea routine, but also uh, for your afternoon adult beverage routine. Again, do with that information what you will. I just thought that these were really neat and I was drawn to them, so hopefully someone else will be drawn to them as well. I paid $7 for them, so roughly a dollar a piece, and I'm very happy with this. The other hard good I actually already sold, so I cannot show that to you. Uh, I'm not sad about that at all because I knew when I picked this up that it would sell pretty quickly. I didn't realize quite it would sell within a few hours of me listing it, uh, and nor did I think it was going to sell for full price. So I could have probably gotten more, but I've actually never encountered this uh, maker before. It's Dune or Dunan. I'm not quite sure. It's an English manufacturer of fine porcelain. This was a fine china mug and it was a big size. And as an autistic woman who also loves trains, I saw that this was the Flying Scotsman and absolutely had to pick this up slightly tempted to keep it for myself because the Flying Scotsman in this edition was the green one, but I honestly was like, no, I'd much rather have the money. I paid a dollar for this at the Goodwill and it sold for my full asking price. So this was an amazing sale and hopefully the train enthusiast will love it as well. As you guys saw in the thumbnail or title, I don't know where I put it, I picked up so much absolutely amazing vintage denim. I was getting a little frustrated because I wasn't finding a whole lot. Uh, I mean, I did find a few shoes, which will be at the end, but I wasn't really finding a whole lot in women's. And so when I checked my my steadfast and true men's section, and man, that is where all the good stuff was. So light wash denim is currently on trend, if you did not know that. That is a little bit of adjustment for me as someone who prefers dark and black denim. But light wash denim is currently on trend, so when I saw this pair, I was intrigued. And it actually is L.L. Bean. Now, I won't normally pay full price at retail thrifts for uh, denim, uh, L.L. Bean denim, unless it is vintage. This is vintage. This is made in the USA. It is a light wash denim, and it is a 4032, but it's actually a 4033. The inseam is a little bit longer than what it says on the tag. And so this is very on trend right now. And actually this particular pair was half off. So instead of having to pay the $9.25, I was able to pay just under $5 for this pair. And I was really, really excited about that until I got it home and went to list it. And what I didn't notice in the store, because I was so excited to find on trend light wash denim because all of the college kids keep snapping it up is that it had this untoward yellow stain right here and again this is men's denim uh, so if you can imagine what would normally be sitting right here that might leave a yellow stain but if you want to know how to get yellowing out of uh, heavy denim or cotton and or uh, if you can get it out of synthetic fabrics what I would recommend doing is taking some hydrogen peroxide and some baking soda. So what I would do first is I would squirt the hydrogen peroxide wherever the yellowing is. So this would also work for underarms as well, wherever the yellowing is. And then I would take the baking soda and make kind of a paste with it where the stain is and then pour some more hydrogen peroxide 
and then set it outside in the sun. I do not recommend doing this for more delicate natural fabrics, such as a very thin weight cotton, silk, and or linen because it can bleach it, especially sitting it out in the sun. If you wanna to try to do this with one of those lighter weight fabrics, you can still do it. I just would not recommend the sun portion because it can have a bleaching effect. Also, I would not recommend leaving it as long either. So if you're gonna do it on one of more of those lightweight fabrics, I would recommend a maximum amount of time of only 10 to 15 minutes, depending on um, the, the, the width, the weight of the, the fabric. Uh, 10 minutes for the lighter weight and then 15 minutes for the heavier weight. Uh, this worked magically. I actually left this out in the sun overnight on accident because I have ADHD as well. So I completely forgot about it till the next day and I was like, oh man, I got everything for this video, but where is that pants? And I was like, do Okay, and so I had to bring it in and, you know, put these in the wash and then put them in the dryer and they came out perfectly. So I was really happy about that. Uh, but like, but again, really cheap and easy way to get yellowing out. It works most of the time. Again, I only recommend the, the setting it out in the sun for a long period of time if it is a heavier fabric. Definitely not linen. Linen will absolutely bleach super fast. So really excited about these. Uh, the next two I'm going to show you is a vintage Levi style that I always get super excited for whenever I find it at the thrift or at the bins. And that is Levi's Silver Tab 90s and Y2K are still very much on trend, peep the bucket hat. But Silver Tab is a 90s specific Levi's style. And I say 90s specific despite the fact that in 2019 they did do a limited release of Silver Tab again. but these are actually true vintage 90s silver tab jeans and these are in a dark wash carpenter style right here. So when I saw the silver tab tag and then I saw it was a carpenter, despite the fact that it is a dark wash, I snapped these up. These are a 36, 34, so it's an amazing long size, which as a tall girly, I love that. And I was very excited, again, to find probably one of my favorite Levi's styles in menswear at the thrift. And not only did I find one, not only did I find one, I found two in my favorite black denim. So I just don't know, I can't really tell. I have a hard time with colors. So I cannot really tell if this is black denim or if this is like just a super dark wash. So I just put dark wash in the title because I legitimately could not tell. You can see how straight and wide these legs are, but this is a 34-34. So another really nice long inseam in this super dark wash. Again, silver tab with the little paper tag. This is oversized fit. This is just the silver. This has had a lot of wash wear, so also this is true vintage as well. And if again, this has wash wear and you can't tell that this is silver tab, it will normally also have it on the inside band as well as the actual Levi's tag that's normally over here on the butt will be gray or silver. So I, I can't believe I found two of these. Both of them I did have to pay the full 925 for, but considering what I normally can sell these for, I'm perfectly happy with that. So I've talked about before how much I love picking up and selling 560s ever since my friend Matt initially talked about them. And that is one of the styles of Levi's that I do look out for in menswear and I found one. Not only did I find it, but I found it in the On Trend Light Wash, which was super exciting. However, this says it's a 3830, but when I actually did the measurements, this was a 36. 30. So I did denote that and normally when there is a discrepancy between what it should be and what it is I just put actual in parentheses right next to that original size measurement and Make sure to put that in the title now. This one is made in the USA. So that is pretty awesome uh, I will however, there is a lot of people confuse the 560s with the 550s The 550s are still currently being made the 560s are no longer being made Which is why the 560s is normally more valuable the 550s I will pick up because it's still an on-trend style because it's a loose fit. However, I will only pick up 550s just like the 505s 
and if they are vintage and by vintage i mean made in the usa so this is a dark wash so not the on trend wash currently but these are a vintage pair of 550s and these are 4030s so a larger size so there's the big check mark there and these are also made in the usa so it is true vintage it is an on-trend style and it is a larger size and it's made in the usa so all of those factors uh, went into me purchasing these and again i could not believe how much vintage denim i was able to find in this one little one little part in the thrift store so the last pair of jeans i have to show you is this pair of pack sun jeans these were actually half off which is why i picked them up so they were less than five dollars they are a small size so a size 20 for, but I have a lot of luck selling black or dark gray denim however you, you want to decide to uh, categorize this and these are a tapered carrot style mom jeans so they're high-waisted but they have this tapered bottom and kind of like a cargo moto style and I just thought that these were really cute I mean if these were in my size I've, I've not been a size 24 in a very long time uh, and nor do I ever want to be a size 24 again because I was not healthy at that time but I just thought that these were a cute style and something that I actually would totally wear myself and because they were half off I decided to pick them up but hopefully these sell well I'm more than happy to try something if I can pay less than five dollars for it especially when I personally think it's cute and when I normally have good luck with similar items so that's all the denim a new to me brand that I am trying so if you did not know I am part Japanese and I am very dialed in to Asian fashion because I feel like that is one awesome uh, two I enjoy it and three because it's actually a really good thing to be dialed into if you are a reseller and this is an Asian specific designer it's called Isuz Izu or Isuzu I think it's Izu, so it's I-Z-Z-U-E. And I saw both of these. Uh, this one, I think I could have put as new with tags because it still has this cloth tag, but because I'm not 100% sure, I just put pre-owned in there. This is the X04 style. I have two of them. They're slightly different. This one has the big spell out on the butt and is a size 30 and it's a pair of cargo shorts. And this one is a black pair. It does not have the butt spell out, but it does have the detachable uh, keychain and these normally retail these shorts normally retail roughly for about $80 US so I picked these up there's currently only one being offered for sale in the United States and it was $65 and it's a green pair in a size 36 I haven't seen any solds but sometimes when you check solds they don't all show up so I'm just gonna give these a try I paid roughly five dollars for this it is shorts season one's a size 30 one's a size 32 uh, i am willing to give these a try because they're still cargo shorts they're still a good price initially and i love giving new asian streetwear brands a try and see if they still have a market here in the united states now we're going to get into women's clothing i love I got a couple of vintage pieces that are absolutely gorgeous. Actually, if you give me a second, I will change into one of them. So I decided to put this on because you guys have told me multiple times how good you think I look in pink. This is a vintage from the 80s, I believe, made in the USA pink top. This is a size six, so a size small. It is very tight in the shoulders. Again, I've talked about that's always where I normally have a fit issue, but it's just a cute little short sleeve button front. I will stand up so you can see it just a little bit better. It's in white, pink, and purple, and a lovely little picnic style. I think it is very cute, and hopefully someone else will as well, and will pick it up for themselves. Now, again, because this is very tight in the shoulders, I am gonna go ahead and change back, so I'll be right back. Okay, the next item is a huge shout out and thank you to my lovely friend Victoria over at Super Geek. She is the reason I know about this fabric at all. This I saw from quite a ways away, instantly ran to it in the women's section, and that is because I thought that this was Liberty fabric. Liberty is a UK 
brand that specializes in these gorgeous floral patterns and they do collabs with quite a few different American designers. This is J. Crew. It's a petite size 6 so that means the arms are a little bit shorter and the chest area is also a little bit shorter like lengthwise. But I saw this beautiful little ditzy floral and I I was hoping it was Liberty Fabric because this would be my first time finding anything made out of Liberty Fabric and I was correct. So Victoria, thank you very much. I'm so glad you talk about stuff like this on your channel and I will link her up above so you guys can check her out if you have absolutely no idea who she is. She specializes in a high ASP model and is a wealth of knowledge in vintage as well as just a wonderful person. So I love your face lady and I hope you're doing well. The next two items are beaded vests. I've talked about on this channel how uh, knitwear is very in because of 90s and Y2K and beaded items are also super in, which I was surprised by. I found two black sweater vests uh, that were in really good condition. And this one, you can see how much beading is on here. The whole front is beaded in this very intricate pattern on both sides this is a size petite medium but it's a vest so a girly that's tall could wear this as like a crop again most people are wearing these currently as a shirt not as a vest and i saw this and thought it was absolutely gorgeous and there were no beads missing on this one however this one uh while it didn't have any beads missing when i put it in the wash it did not make it through the wash without any beads missing However, I've talked about before on this channel how I don't mind small sewing projects. I'm okay with projects, turning projects into profits. Uh, if you, that's not your thing, no worries. But these are a straight bugle bead. These are a straight six millimeter bugle bead. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. It just means that that's just the style and size of the bead. They're these little straight flat beads. And I ended up re-sewing well i ended up going to joann's and buying these beads because it's a normal bead size and sewing the item back together so when it's a repair where you wouldn't know it was repaired i don't disclose it because i don't feel like there's a need to due to the fact that it literally looks factory and actually would be in better shape than if i were to have not washed this and put it up for sale because the first time somebody washed it it would have had the same issue but because i washed it and then sew these back on stronger, the next person is not going to have that issue. But this is just a straight diamond pattern with these beads. This one is a size large, and the last one was made out of acrylic. This one is made out of lamb's wool, so it is a higher uh, fabric and a little bit larger size, and I hope someone purchases this and loves it because I just thought that this was super cute. And I'm really happy to save these beautiful vintage pieces from getting smashed in trash because especially something like, especially items like this where it's intricately beaded, I would just feel so sad that someone spent the time to do all this handiwork and then for it not to go on to a new home and end up in a landfill. This is the only new with tags item that I could actually say it's new with tags and I purchased this because it is swimsuit season. This is Cupshe, which is a fast fashion like boutique brand. But because it was new with tag, I decided to pick it up. It's also this really nice one piece with this banded midsection. It's a 2XL, which I thought was great. It still has a little hygiene thing inside and the tag. It's a nice little halter thing. I know some ladies that are more endowed in the front set region. Uh, maybe not necessarily like the halter because it can be very heavy, uh, but I'll give it a try and see what, and see what happens. And now we're going to talk about shoes because I actually got four pairs of shoes, but I only have three of them to show you because one of them already sold. This pair of rock climbing shoes sold almost as soon as I listed them, which is surprising because they were a kid's size. Now you see here, I listed them as kids and as women's. I actually bought these and they gave me the kids price, which I think is around three or four dollars at Goodwill. So that was awesome. But rock climbing shoes in general are going to look a whole lot smaller than normal size shoes because it's supposed to be a barefoot experience and like your feet get really cramped because you have to like do toe grips. If you don't rock climb, you don't really need to know any of that information. But these shoes will look a lot smaller than they're actually supposed to be. So just note that when you're listing them. So these sold immediately after I listed them, which is why you don't see them, but they stood out immediately to me because I knew what they were. 
I've talked about how it's really rare for me to pick up Cole Haan's. They have to be interesting or an amazing shape for me to pick them up. These fit both of those uh, marks. The bottoms look like they have never been worn. These are a pair of women's Cole Haan's in like this olive green gray kind of color. And these were a size, I cannot see this now. You guys can see it on the listing. So I picked these up again. Shoes at the Goodwill are roughly $9 now, but I thought that I could sell these and at least double my money on them. These next shoes, again, I've talked about how normally for me, the opportunities I have sourcing shoes are normally uh, brands that most people don't know uh, because then it doesn't get one marked up at the thrift store and two other shoe resellers aren't going to pick them up. I saw these, I whenever I see these woven leather loafers, I pick them up, one, to see what kind of leather they are and then two, to see the brand. When I pick these up and these are so buttery soft, like when you hear someone talk about like buttery soft leather, this this is what they mean. You can't feel it through here, through, through the internet, but this is what they mean by that. And then, so I looked up the brand. The brand is Robert Zur, and these are driving loafers. These are women's driving loafers. And when I saw the comps on these, I was like, absolutely, I will pick them up. These are an, again, immaculate shape, very minimal wear on them. The leather is just gorgeous. The shoes themselves are a classic style. And that is why I was able to pick them up, despite the fact that there were literally two shoe resellers in the store when I was there shopping that had full shopping carts. <laughs> they still left these behind again because it's not Adidas or Nike or Converse or Vans. It's not any of those. It's, it's, a, it's a relatively unknown brand. This is also another brand that I feel like you should know or be on the lookout for. And it's not one that I really see a whole lot of people talking about here on reselling YouTube. And that is Double H. Double H is a boot brand. They specialize in leather boots, not only Western wear, but also military boots. This is a pair of vintage military boots. I do believe they actually have some kind of reinforced toe here. It is a toe cap, but it feels also like maybe this is steel toe, but I can't verify that because I'm not going to shove my whole face in here to figure that out. So I didn't disclose that in the listing. These are made in the USA. Actually has this giant freaking flag in here to tell you it's made in the USA. These are a men's size 6D, which is a women's size 8D. To verify that, I put my whole foot in here and it is a, a size 8D. So normally I wear an eight and a half A, a BA depending on the cut of the shoe. So I, I normally have an eight and a half narrow shoe. And so the fact that this is an eight wide, that's why I was able to fit into these comfortably. So I, I listed it as both these double H military boots were going between 40 to $90. It just depends on the size and condition. So I put these up for this price and we will see what happens. But I saw these and was like, yeah, those. And then I saw the HH logo. So this is what the double H logo looks like, just so you can be on the lookout for it. Some people will mistake this and just put HH boots, um, but the actual brand name is double H. So I think you'll have more success if you put double H as the brand name versus just putting HH, because HH could also be Helly Hansen. So that is everything I picked up at the Goodwill this day. Again, I am loving gut thrifting. It has paid off. I'm really happy and I will hopefully see you guys next video. Until then, bye. Hero, bye. Hero, hero. Hero, hero. I wanna be a hero, hero. Oh, the hero.